In the last few months, over 100,000 migrants have been processed in New York. And rather than deal with many of the problems faced by New Yorkers, which is what critics would say, uh, Mayor Eric Adams instead is worried more about the migrants and trying to provide them free housing and other giveaways that uh, uh, some of his critics feel are completely inappropriate. That's right. And a local resident living next to a migrant shelter in Staten Island, New York, says the experience has left him feeling like a prisoner in his very own neighborhood. Joining us to discuss, Staten Island resident Scott Herker. Scott, thanks so much for being with us. Uh, you said that the city has installed cameras in your neighborhood, not to watch the migrants per se, but rather to keep tabs on the local residents. Uh, tell us what's going on in your neighborhood. Well, that's what it kind of feels like. I mean, uh, kudos to the PD. They've been very uh, doing a great, great job over here. We haven't had any problems with them. But yes, we do feel like we're, you know, we are the ones being watched now. I mean, some of the people I know did a little research on those cameras. They're very, very advanced cameras that I believe do facial re recognition and maybe even uh, voice recognition. Hey, why do you think the cameras are there? Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, uh, probably have to get smarter minds to figure that out. Uh, I just, it's just, you don't recognize your own neighborhood overnight. It's just crazy. And how long have you, have you lived in, in the neighborhood? Uh, approximately 20 years. Wow. Okay. And, you, and so, but it's not the neighborhood uh, that you recognize, it sounds like. Uh, that's correct. What else has changed besides those cameras? Uh, I mean, the neighborhood's in an uproar. You have a neighborhood that, that really is not suited for this. You have, it's a small community. It's a quiet community. You have schools on multiple sides of this facility. You have, uh, I mean, literally right across the street, you have a, uh, a K-12 through private school. Uh, which is literally steps from this facility. And another one, another school, just uh, uh, elementary school, just a uh, block and a half away. Yeah, I don't mean to believe the issue with the cameras. Do you feel uh, a little like that Big Brother watching? Do you think the Big Brother, uh, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but uh, Big Brother might be watching the migrants or watching the neighbors? How do you think those are being utilized? I mean... You, you kind of feel like it's watching you. I mean, uh, I mean, I'm, you know, I don't know. Yeah, it just un yeah. Un sounds like an unsettling feeling. Uh, you've also said that migrants are dropped off all hours of the day and night and that the police sometimes block your street off. There are some loud industrial generators running uh, nearly uh, all day and night. Tell us more. Our block, our block is blocked off. Uh, it, uh, it's closed off. And, uh, yes, they do drop them off at the hours of the night. I believe I heard that there is going to be another 50 coming today. Uh, how do you wish that this would resolve itself? Well, I would say this. I mean, if Mayor Adams is a smart man, which, which I think he is, he didn't get there by, you know, being an idiot, uh, he, he would come out here and take a look at this facility and realize that on his own that maybe someone in his uh, administration, maybe, uh, or his cabinet, whatever you call it, that may have made a bad decision there. All right, Scott, thank you so much for being with us. We wish you the best there. Sure. Uh, and we just want to remind people, even though there's a story in New York, this is a story going on in a lot of communities across the country. That's right. As um, the, the flood of illegal immigrants uh, continues and that local communities that aren't prepared to deal with that, um, that they have to deal with it whether they like it or not.